Hold on, some of y'all. Let me grab it. Grab somebody. It's all right. We don't bite at any of y'all. Look at them and just say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm glad to be in church. Be the preacher needs your prayers. Amen. All of your amens. Amen. Today's, sermon Today's sermon subject. Excuse me. Excuse. Have you seen the ghosts? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades. The word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers. You may retire. Psalms 37 and 23 declare that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, I do not, for the sake of public presentation, Jacqueline, see myself as a perfect man. I will tell people to follow me, listen, as I follow Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? If you were looking for a flawless leader, I am not him. For those who were paying attention earlier, I just told you I was at the concert last night. There's something about Charlie that makes me say, sing it, Charlie. <laughs> Are you following me here? So listen carefully, listen carefully. I am not perfect by any measure. I am not flawless by any measure. However, I believe in my heart, I am a good man. Meaning my heart is for God. Even when I'm flawed, my soul wants to satisfy God. Are you listening to me? That being stated, ladies and gentlemen, I pray every day, every day that God would order my steps. Just last week and the week before, God did something, Dr. Gabrielle Lemonnier, that has never happened to me in 21 years of gospel ministry. He sent me to the same city two weeks consecutively. Neither planner had anything to do with it, but San Antonio, Texas, the Alamo City, is where I've been for two consecutive weeks. I went the first week of the month of March for the citywide revival with my dear friend, Dr. Cedric Veal. Unbeknownst to me, my family was planning a spring break vacation, and they made it clear to me, you're going to turn your phone off and give us your undivided attention, and we're going to San Antonio. I said, San Antonio? What's in San Antonio that I need that badly that God would send me, listen, two weeks in a row? Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to this story because I believe it's why God sent me there. While staying in San Antonio, Texas, I was residing at the Menger Hotel downtown San Antonio. It's in the historic district a few blocks away from the Alamo. I'm at the hotel on the second day, and Jacqueline will something awkward happen. While I'm standing with my backpack, black suit, black pants, black tie, white shirt, preparing to go to church, a young Euro-American boy, about 11 years old, walked up to me, tapped me and said, Sir, excuse me, but have you seen the ghost? I said, have I seen the ghost? I said, no, I don't know nothing about, no, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. And so he went on, he said, listen, didn't you know this place is haunted and there's supposed to be a ghost on the premises? I said, a ghost? I said, hold on, I done stayed in a bunch of hotels. I ain't never stayed in a haunted hotel. So he goes on down the corridor telling people all throughout the corridor, hey, there's a ghost here. There's supposed to be a ghost. Hey, have you guys seen the ghost? I'm looking for the ghost. And with great enthusiasm, he touched people he didn't even know while he was looking for the ghost that was supposed to be on the premises. As I stood there, the Holy Ghost began to breathe on me like a strong east wind. And I said, hold on just a minute. While an 11-year-old boy is looking for what is haunted, if some church folk with a right mind would look for what is holy, you would show 
show up at church every Sunday asking the same questions. Have you seen the ghosts? Have you, have you even heard about the ghosts? Are you even looking for the ghosts? It's amazing because churches have lots of meetings. But my question is, is the ghost there? I mean, I've heard the deacons have meetings, but did the ghost show up? I mean, we've heard choir rehearsal, but was any ghost at the choir rehearsal? You see, I've heard y'all been clapping and singing songs, but here is my pastoral question. Was the ghost involved? You see, ladies and gentlemen, if the ghost is not there, it's a waste of time. But if the Holy Ghost shows up in the midst of what you hey, are doing, I need about 50 people in here who came looking for the ghost, who came searching for the ghost. But tell somebody, I'm looking for the ghost right now. It's the book of Acts. It is the recorded history of the church. And Dr. Shannon Allen, it's amazing because Jesus has been resurrected in chapter number one. You all listen to me carefully as I seek to teach you. If nothing else makes you happy and nothing else makes you rejoice, a resurrected Jesus should make you wave your hand. If Jesus is still dead, we may as well close our Bibles, go home, quit praying, quit singing, and quit clapping. But the Bible tells us our Savior is alive and well. In chapter number one, Jesus has been resurrected and he is now with his disciples on the outskirts of Jerusalem and he tells them tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost comes and when the Holy Ghost comes you will be my witnesses first in Jerusalem then in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world the church is born with 120 people looking for the the ghost. It may help us to understand why some churches are dead every Sunday. You can go to a church that ain't got no fire, ain't nobody happy to be there. The deacons don't want to pray, choir don't want to sing, and preacher got an attitude. Can I tell you why? Ain't no ghost there. But I want to suggest to you right quick that you didn't come for John Adolph. You didn't come because Antioch is all of that because we are not. You showed up today because you heard the ghost passes by every once in a while and ladies and gentlemen for those of you who are here who love the Lord you showed up with the ghost already I need some people in here who got a little ghost in them to touch a neighbor and say neighbor I'm in search of the ghost right now I got him with me but I want more of him it's because why come to church and have a ghostless service if the Holy Ghost shows up lives will change. If the Holy Ghost shows up, worry becomes worship. If the Holy Ghost shows up, he will take your pain and give you peace. If the Holy Ghost shows up, he will take a sinner and make a saint. If the Holy Ghost shows up, the devil cannot stay. If the Holy Ghost shows up, lives will be altered. If the Holy Ghost shows up, drunks will become biblically based believers. If the Holy Ghost shows up, people who would have bad habits it's what leaves saying, I've been delivered. Is there anybody in here who knows the Holy Ghost, believes in the Holy Ghost, trusts in the Holy Ghost, relies on the Holy Ghost, talks with the Holy Ghost, walks with the Holy Ghost? Can I drop this in right quick? People who are full of the Holy Ghost get on people's nerves who don't have no ghosts at all. Let me go on and tell you, they're not going to like you when you're full of the ghosts. But go ahead and tell them the ghost is transferable. You are to start laying your hands on some of those stiff jokers around you right now. You ought to tell them in the name of the Lord I want to give you a little bit of what I got. Why? Because we need the ghosts at the Antioch Church. I am sick of tradition. I'm sick of people stuck in their way. I'm tired of church as usual. I want a service where the Holy Ghost explodes in this place. I want to have so much Holy Ghost at the Antioch Church that when folk drive down 69 they feel a shift when they pass by. Why? Because that ghost will make your life better. I need about 50 of y'all in here to just ju jump to your feet and high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I came looking for the ghost. I don't care about sitting by you. I need God in my life and I need 
need Holy Ghost power. Touch some people on your road and say, have you seen the ghost? Have you seen, are you even looking for the ghost? Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit makes the difference in the church. Minister Cheryl Williams, a church with no ghosts is like a car with no engine. A church with no ghosts is like a Burger King with no Whopper. Help me God. A church with no ghosts is like a McDonald's with no Big Mac. A church with no ghosts is a waste of your time. But if we have, hey God help me. But if we have the Holy Ghost in this place, you can tote people in on a stretcher and they'll leave walking on two legs. You can bring a man in with cancer and his tumors ought to get bigger, but God won't let him move. If you have the Holy Ghost in his place, God will heal stuff nobody else can fix, save stuff nobody else can save, and fight battles you know you cannot win. Is there anybody in this house who doesn't mind being a ghost finder in here tell your neighbor I'm not spooky I'm saved and I'm looking for the ghost what happens when the ghost is here can, can I teach you for a minute? Whenever the ghost is here, I want you to remember this. The ghost always enters at the appointed time. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost, because of his ubiquity, is present everywhere. Everybody say everywhere. However, there are times when even children know that God is in charge. There comes a point, ladies and gentlemen, ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. There comes a point when you know in the assembly of the saints, Lana, where the Holy Ghost has ripped up your agenda and given you his. It's a point where even children have to sit still. Folk don't move. People who know on the tip, I say, hold on, I can't leave. Something about to happen. It's because God shows up at the appointed time. God is a God of order and timing. I do not speak according to Kronos, Bryce, but Kairos. There are two idioms of time. There is one time you can measure. Seconds become minutes. Minutes become hours. Hours become days. Days become weeks. Weeks become months. Months become years. Years become decades. Decades become centuries. Centuries become centennials. Centennials become sesquicentennials. Sesquicentennials become millennials. Teach Pastor Adolf. It's stuff you can measure. Like, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. You understand? It's because you can measure that time. But ladies and gentlemen, there is chirotic time. And chirotic time cannot be measured. It can only be waited for. And when the Holy Ghost shows up, he doesn't show up according to your schedule. He shows up according to his. In the book of Acts chapter number 2, we see the day of Pentecost. Everybody say Pentecost. It is a feast of the Jews, Minister Cheryl Williams, and you cannot celebrate Pentecost without considering the previous feast. The first feast was the feast of the Passover. According to the book of Exodus, chapter number 12, Moses is about to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. And the last plague they're about to see, Mr. Briscoe, is the plague where Moses hits them where every firstborn of Egypt Egypt is going to die. But to protect his own people, he tells them, kill a lamb, it will be the Passover lamb. Take the blood of the lamb, put it over the doorpost and the side post. And when the death angel comes through the city, when you're covered by the blood, you won't have to worry about it because the blood has already covered you. <laughs> Hold on, this first shout is only for the covered folk. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I may not have good insurance, but I got one well of an assurance because I've been covered. 
by the blood. Hold on. But then the Passover lamb is the first one. But then three days later, that is the feast. Watch this. Of, 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 watch this. That is the second feast that we look at. And this feast, ladies and gentlemen, is so wonderful because it is the feast of unleavened bread or the feast of weeks. In other words, when you get through with this, there is a Passover feast. Everybody say Passover. Hold on, say it again. Say Passover. And then after the Passover, ladies and gentlemen, comes what we call the Feast of Weeks. Or, or should I say it this way? Uh, it should be looked at as a week of weeks. Uh, it's 49 days. Seven times seven is 49. And on the 50th day was the day of, everybody say, Pentecost. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on the day of Pentecost, it was something special. Because now they could celebrate not only the lamb that had died and the one who had been resurrected, but they could now celebrate the fact that their leaves have become loaves. Oops, I forgot something important. You see, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they would take leaves and wave the leaves. Everybody say, wave a leaf. That's why I have y'all wave your offering every Sunday because it's just your leaf. But 50 days later, the harvest had come in and they no longer wave leaves, they wave loaves. Hold on, you're missing your second shout. There's a big difference between a leaf and a loaf, boo-boo. And the difference between a leaf and a loaf is portion. And the Holy Ghost comes on the day of Pentecost, which lets us know that the portion is about to change. Ladies and gentlemen, how would you shout today if I told you that you might have a little, but by the time God gets through with your life and the Holy Ghost gets through working in you, the little you have will become a lot later. Hold on. I need to talk to some people in here who've been struggling all year long. God told me to tell you, you might have leaves now, but you'll have loaves later. I need some people in here who want more of God, more of the Holy Ghost, more of his presence, more of his power, more of his position, more of his truth to just lift your hands toward heaven and say, God, I want more. I don't want more money and all of that. That's going to come later. I want more of your direction, more of your protection, more of your joy, more of your influence, more of your presence, more of your power, more of your potency. I want more. Can I give y'all the third shout because I'm hurrying? God never lets anybody determine your portion but him. Okay. I'm trying the best I can. Uh, you do realize you can't let everybody give you your portion. Because some folk ain't going to include you. But can I give y'all a shout right quick? God determines your portion. I wish I had about 50 of y'all in here who can say, God, I want more. Pentecost is the difference between a drop and a, and a flood. Pentecost gave us the coming of the Holy Ghost. And when God showed up, he did not just give them a little. He gave them a lot. Dr. Jonathan C. Jackson, Dr. Lemonnier, calls this the residue of redemption. Because when God is involved, it's always more than enough. Wait, hold on. Let me shout you right quick. Because Danielle, this shouts me. Whenever people see folk who don't don't have a lot of money they assume they don't have a lot and that's a lie you see because you're looking in the poor person's hand and not the hand that's putting it in the poor person's palm but when you know where what you get comes from you ain't ever gotta act like you're broke as long as you know you got a running river that's gonna take care of you you ought to tell your neighbor God keeps putting it right in my hand sometimes I don't even deserve it sometimes I ought not even have it but every time I turn around he keeps on making a way from me who am I talking to I'm about to pull my hair out and I ain't got none. Tell your neighbor he gives me more. I got to hurry. The ghost always alters the agenda. Oh, 
He alters the atmosphere. Uh, hey, listen, y'all, right quick. This little kid is running through the hotel. He now has my attention, Juliet Marks. And here's what he says. I hope the ghost didn't leave. I'm not lying, y'all. I'm not lying. He said, I hope the ghost didn't leave. He's the main attraction around here. I said, oh, my God. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please hear this. You don't care who leaves. That's cool. But you don't want the ghost to leave. God, please let the ghost stay. I need about a hundred of y'all to tell your neighbor, I want the ghost to stay. Why? Because the ghost alters the atmosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot come in contact with the spirit of God and remain the same. Uh, okay, listen, it's 1130. I got to hurry up. Let me just say this to y'all right quick. Uh, they were in one place on one accord. Hey, Major Goldman, this is like right up your alley because the word one place and one accord all come from musical idiom. It means they were harmoniously put together. Okay, hold on, listen to me carefully because we get confused about harmony. Harmony is not unity or synergy. It's a combination of them both. You see, here is how it works, Sister Jones. You don't have to be E-flat to appreciate B-flat. Flat. But if you like being B flat and you B flat, you ain't got to be jealous of E flat, F or G. Why? Because when you strike them all together, they make pretty harmony. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. You ain't got to be jealous of your neighbor. You ain't got to be mad at your neighbor. You ain't got to be like them. You just got to work together. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I ain't trying to be like you. I like being me. In fact, I like me so much, I thank God for me all the doggone time. But since we here, we may as well work together. You praise him, I'll help you I shout when I get tired, you shout Why? Because we want to make a harmonious praise together And when they came together The Bible says that something happened in the atmosphere Something happened in the as Something happened You see, they had been arguing, fussing, and fighting Judas had killed himself Jesus had left So they had an unofficial meeting You know, Baptist it's a big with meetings. So they decided to make Matthias the disciple and to take Judas's place and they had been fussing. But when they quit tripping and start trusting, when they started praying and stopped trying to problem solve, when they put their efforts together, something changed the atmosphere. And the Bible says that were cloven tongues as a fire that set upon them. Listen carefully. Please hear this announcement. One of the ways you know you have been in the presence of the Holy Ghost is there is some fire around that premises. You cannot have any Holy Ghost and not have any fire. Fire is a symbol of the presence of God. When Elijah was on Mount Carmel, he answered by fire. The Bible says Elijah told him, let the one God who is God rain down fire and fire fell from heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, the psalmist says, I our God is a consuming fire and when the church comes together like it should come together there will be a fire in that place it's why I'm frustrated sometimes as a pastor because I see people come in who have fire and the people that don't have fire put their fire out that's why you ought to stop sitting with people that ain't got no fire some people got a water hose in their purse a fire extinguisher in their back pocket you got some sex that don't want no fire at all how you gonna come to church and say it's boring and you're supposed to be the one with the fire i need some people in here that's got a little fire Woo. that's got a little fire in them to just jump to your feet right quick and tell some people i brought fire with me today i've got a fire in my bones i'm like jeremiah every time i try to open my mouth it feels like fire Shut up in my bones. I did not come to watch you, but I came to give him glory because the ghost shows up every time. 
Listen to me because my time is running on me. The ghost changes the atmosphere. It literally, listen to me, the Holy Spirit will change the attitudes of people, change the atmosphere of a church, and change the surrounding of everything around us to the point that healing takes place. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me as I beg you. When you come in this house, you ought to come in unashamed of the Holy Ghost fire that you possess. Because when your fire ignites with somebody else's, and somebody else's ignites with yours, you end up with a blaze that the world has to pay attention to. Can I tell you what's wrong with us? We got preachers that ain't got no fire. They're so busy with armor bearers and people carrying their Bible, they ain't got no fire. We got choirs that don't have no fire. They're so happy about their voice, they can't sing with nobody else. We got people on a pew who God has healed and restored and paid bills for, but they ain't got no fire. I'm tired of fire saints. I want to be around somebody who gets happy walking through the kitchen. I want to be around somebody who gets happy driving down the freeway. I want to be around somebody who's been in church all of their life and God has kept you, helped you, sustained you, blessed you. I want somebody with some fire to grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, it feels like fire shut up in my bar. two minutes? Can, can I spend just two minutes? Y'all, I was born Baptist, raised Baptist, read Baptist. Hey, say it, say it. I've been Baptist all my life. But for about two years, because of Baptist foolishness, my mama took us to Lakewood Church. Hold on, feel me. For those who go home with me today, you'll see I'm from Lakewood. Hey, Dr. Lamonier, people don't know that was a neighborhood. Hold on. Lakewood was an economically challenged part of Houston where you grew up with what, no bullies. We had two by fours and beer bottles. Are you listening to me? Ain't nobody finna take nothing. If you let them take it, they gonna keep taking your stuff. It's Lakewood, all good in the hood. Are you listening to what I'm trying to teach you? Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. So it wasn't always the big, big church where Joel Osteen was. It was Joel's daddy, John Osteen. Completely different preacher, Dr. Allen. Listen, John Osteen and Joel Osteen are night and day. John Osteen was a fire breathing, packing preacher who walked pews, laid hands, and believed in the Holy Ghost. One night we went to church. This was my first time ever experiencing this. We would sit in the back of church on the right-hand side. There was a Hispanic family who sat next to us with a Hispanic man whose arm was always like it hurt. He couldn't extend his arm. You know how you say, hey, let's fellowship? He couldn't extend his arm. It always came halfway. But ladies and gentlemen, one night the Holy Ghost fell in that church. Y'all ain't paying attention. One night the Holy Ghost fell in that church. Hold on, one night the Holy Ghost fell in that church. I could tell something was different. Nobody was sitting, everybody was standing. People were shouting and weeping and worshiping. And John Osteen said, the power of the Holy Ghost is in this place. He said, if you sit, come in right quick, I wanna lay hands on you. And the Hispanic man who was on my row with the messed up arm ran up front. Y'all, when he got to John Osteen, John Osteen said, do you believe in the Holy Ghost? He said, yes. He said, do you believe God has all power? He said, yes. He said, give me your arm. He snatched it. We heard it pop, pop. That man jumped up and ran all around church. And when he got back to my row, he didn't shake my hand with a short arm. He stuck it out and said, God healed me. Can I tell you why? He was because he was in an atmosphere where the Holy Ghost could do what he wants to do. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of pretending. I want to be around some people who want to see a move of God who will say, God, have your way in this house. I got to stop. Let me, let me just say this. 
Little boy running up the thing. And Antoinette, I heard one of the, one of the people who parked cars ask him, say, listen, how will you know when the ghost is here? He said, oh, that's easy, sir. There'll be some screams. <laughs> I start following him around, waiting on somebody to holler, you know, I don't know. Because wherever the Holy Ghost is, there ought to be screams of acclamation. On the day of Pentecost, they heard in their own language, but on a day like today, they ought to hear praises and shouts. If the ghost is present, there ought to be some sign. Uh, is there anybody in here? God won't shout for the Holy Ghost. If you don't mind, lift up your hands, open up your mouth in here, and shout, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Find one neighbor's hand. Hold their hand. Hold it like you've been born again. Some of y'all ain't holding. But I said, hold your neighbor's hand. And say, neighbor, there's supposed to be a ghost on the premises. There ought to be a ghost around here somewhere. Tell a neighbor, I'm not looking for the ghost. I found the ghost. Say, truth be told, he found me. He picked me up, turned me around, planted my feet. Woo! On a solid ground. Anybody here loves him? If you love him, praise him. If you love him, bless him. If you love him, honor him. If you love him, lift him. If you love him, shout to him. I feel like it's about to be a move of God. If you love the Holy Ghost, tell him I love him, I love him. Yeah, I love him, I love him. Yeah, I love him, I love him. Ain't he all right now? Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. I feel all right. I said, I feel all right. Hug your neighbor around the neck and said, excuse me. I don't normally church like this, but I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel a fire brewing on the inside. I came for healing and I ain't leaving till I get what I came for. Can we make the devil in hell mad? Can we make heaven happy? If you don't mind, lift up your hands and make a joyful noise. I'm talking about a joyful noise. I'm talking about a joyful noise. I'm talking about a joyful noise. Come on, open your mouth. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all with, with me. Bless his holy name. Woo, cut that music off. Open your mouth in this house. Bless him with your soul. Bless him with your heart. Bless him like he's real. Bless him like you love him. Take your mind off of your worry. Take your mind off of your stress. Take your mind off of your mess. Open your mouth in this house and bless the Lord. The little boy said there ought to be some screams. I wish I had somebody in here who had a little Holy Ghost. You ought to open your mouth and do it.
those hands. I feel your Holy Ghost. Lift them, lift them, lift them. Lift them. I want you to come to worship anticipating a move of God. Pentecost. He dies. First fruits is resurrected. Pentecost. Holy Ghost. Lift those hands. There were times people come to church sick on a demonic attack suffering and struggling. I got good news for all y'all in those categories. It's been a setup for you today. God sent you because he knew the ghost would be present. It's a lot these hands can't fix, but it's nothing his hands can't repair. Listen carefully. If you're sick, encountering a demonic attack, in need of restoration, while the ghost rests on us, I want you to come quickly. Come as fast as you can. Come as fast as you can. I want y'all to come like that Hispanic man did. He just rushed down by. Come, 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 come. Come as quickly as you can. Hallelujah. Lift those hands. Hallelujah. Come on, help me worship it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love it. Oh, Lord, we love. Come on, help me kiss him. Help me kiss him. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Tell him we need him. Tell him you need him. Lift your hands and just tell him, say, Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. a change in portion. Yes. On this day, the church went from leaves to loaves. I told you in this morning's discourse, your joy is that God doesn't let anybody determine your portion. There were some of you here this morning who would say, Pastor, I need for my portion to change. I've been waiting on increase a long time. Listen to me. If you are not weary in your well-doing, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. I want to talk to those right quick who need to see their portion increase. 
In fact, since we're so late, if you're here and you just need to see your portion change, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Just tell your neighbor, excuse me, you're good with your portion, I'm good. But I want to see my portion increase. Come as quickly as you can. Just tell your neighbor, excuse me, I ain't got no time to waste. But I believe in God for a change in my portion. Thank you, Jesus. I want all of us to worship with hands lifted. Tell him this, I adore you. Lord, I adore you. Uh-huh, come on, sing it to him like you love him. I adore you. Oh, I adore you. God, who I adore you. Oh, I adore you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I adore you. With those hands lifted, tell him this. says God inhabits the praise of his people so just for the next 30 seconds before I whisper our final prayer I want you to thank God personally and publicly for the victory for the person of the Holy Ghost for your portion change for your victory in spiritual warfare for your victory over health concerns wait I don't want to paticate God no 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 this is much more personal I want you to come on praise him right here with everything that you have with the last shout of the day come on open your mouth in this house I want you to release something into this atmosphere I want you to I want you to love on God to the point you can feel his presence bathe you come on come on lift your hands all over this place For healing God, for deliverance God, for strength and purity God, for mercy and grace God. Woo! God help us. Yes, sir.
the name of Jesus, I come before yes, you Lord. in the presence of the ghost, saying thank you, Lord, for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. We respect your presence. We stand in awe of your presence. We reverence your presence. God, we thank you for you and who you are. Though our naked eye cannot see you, our hearts believe in you. And this day, God, we thank you for healing that only you can provide. We thank you for portion that only you can give. We thank you for increase and overflow. I thank you for the shift between the leaf and the loaf. I thank you for more of you, God more of your peace, more of your power. I thank you for those who are being attacked by the enemy. Today, Lord, fight their battle for them. Take enemy attacks and put it under their feet. In fact, Lord, let them come out of the furnace not even smelling like smoke or looking like they've been in a fire. And when all is said and settled and solid, we'll be careful to give you praise and honor and glory and majesty and power and dominion because the glory belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the ghost. Ooh, thank you for the Holy Ghost. 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 In the name of Jesus. When you walk through a storm, hold your heads up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain. Though sometimes your dreams may be tossed and blown. Walk on with Jesus in your hearts and I promise you this, saints. You'll never ever walk alone. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling to the only wise God that we shall ever ever, ever, ever know. To our King, immortal, invisible, and eternal, to him who sits high and who looks low, may grace, might, majesty, peace, power, prosperity, and dominion be his forever and forever and forever. Before we sing our final word, I heard that little kid say, I want to see what the ghost is like. Um, there's always a remnant here. I'm going to say, Pastor Adolf, I heard this whole sermon, but I kind of want to know what the ghost is like. He does more than make you shout or scream. He's the sweetest friend you'll ever have. To come to know Jesus Christ is the greatest gift on earth you will ever encounter. Uh, Anna, y'all, give our new members a big hand clap of praise. Give them a big hand clap of love. Well, Pastor Adolf, well, how, 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 how do I come to know God in spirit? How do, how do I do that? All of our deacons, counselors, clergy, y'all wave at God's people. See these waving hands? See them? Look at them carefully. When service is over, just find one. They're going to be so happy you made their way to them because they're going to take your hand to give your heart to God. If you're here and you say, hey, pastor, I'm already saved, but I just need a church home. We are so happy to have you. We would be so excited for you to become a part of the faith fellowship of the Antioch Church. How do you do it? All of our deacons, counselors, clergy, y'all wave like you're in a parade. See these hands? Find one. After we sing amen, they'll show you exactly what to do. Man, anybody love the ghost in here? Man, y'all ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost in this house. I do too. I do too. It means so be it. It means that self. It means that resolve. It means it's true. I receive it. Come on, let's sing this final word together. Oh, man. Hug your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I've been blessed. God bless you. Go in peace. You are excused.